Hey, you guys have three wins in a row. Looking for number four tonight against the Oilers. How do you guys think you're going to keep that ball rolling? Um, I think, you know, the last few games have been good for us. We just uh, we have had a higher compete level, been playing harder. Um, I think the guys are playing a little more simple, you know, not trying to cheat too much on offense and just doing the little things right. And obviously we're getting some bounces to go our way too, so that helps. You're back in the lineup tonight. How are you feeling? I feel good. Um, you know, it's, it's always tough being out when uh, you got to watch from the locker room and watch on TV, stuff like that. So that's never fun, but I feel good, and uh, I'm excited to get back out there. Well, Wade, you played your first game as a Detroit Red Wing. Uh, what was it like for you, that experience? Um, it was unbelievable. It was an awesome experience to, to put on the jersey and to be able to get my first game uh, here with Detroit. It was uh, a great feeling. You had a breakaway there in the hockey game against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, did you, were you thinking about uh, maybe possibly getting your first goal as a wing? Yeah, absolutely. That was a, a good opportunity for me. Um, you know, I was uh, uh, kind of after the game thinking about it, but, you know, certainly thankful for, for getting those opportunities. And I think um, if I can continue to generate offense, I think that's, uh, that's a bonus for sure. Last year you were trying to shoot the puck high mm -hmm. and you were aiming, and this year you're just shooting it. Is that the difference in the, and it, it's more accurate that way? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, not going, uh, I'm not trying to pick the corners really, you know, uh, just go with the uh, mid-body and, uh, you know, uh, the last game uh, I shot it and it was a mid-body shot and I went in, so uh, I think I don't, uh, I don't have to go as high, you know, and also it's, uh, if I hit him or something, the rebound probably come easier for the guys standing for the net, right, too, so, uh, it's definitely better going that way than uh, just going high and miss the net or anything like that. Seeing Connor McDavid, have you ever had any kind of contact with him at all as you were coming? I up? have not. No, um, played in completely different leagues, and I have not seen him on the ice yet. So I'm excited. I know you're not worried about what they're doing. You got to worry about what you're doing. Um, yeah, they've been doing well as of late. You know, won a few games, and they have. A lot of speed up front, that's for sure, with McDavid and, and Dreisaitl and those guys. So um, we're going to have to you know, try to be as close to them as we can and you know, not give them too much open ice to wheel the net and gain that speed. So yeah, if we can you know, try to gap up and be tight on them, I think you know, we'll have to give ourselves a better chance. But what are the challenges that, that someone like McDavid presents in prepping for a game? Well, I think it's you know it's similar to, to we saw with with Taylor Hall. Guys like that can create something out of nothing. Um, you can be in good defensive position. You know that Taylor Hall did that a couple of times where he just created space and, and opportunities and offense when really you're in pretty good defensive structure and pretty good defensive spots. That's just the reality of what the elite players in the league do. They create that space for themselves and. Um, you know, obviously McDavid's is as elite as they come. They, uh, they've got other guys in their team that can do it as well in different ways. Dry settle certainly does it. Uh, um, so, you know, it's just you, you got to do everything you can to, to be in as good a, pos a position as possible to defend, to take away space. Sometimes that's easier said than done. I'd say the biggest thing is is the more you can make uh, any of those elite players defend, uh, the better off you are. And, and I thought we did a pretty good job with that with Jersey. We didn't create lots of offense out of our ozone play, but we created lots of ozone grind. Well, every time you're grinding, they're defending, and, and generally then they're, they're tired enough, they, they get to the red line and change, and that's what we'd like to do again tonight. I would imagine that you have to be at least pleased with the way this team has stuck together during you know, a couple of trying times there early in the season. Got good leadership in this in this in this room for sure. Um, I think that leadership's just as important at a time when you've won three in a row as when you've lost some in a row. Is you, you have to understand that uh, it's a next game and next shift mentality. The game that just we played is over. We hopefully got better yesterday, and now we got to focus on today's game. And that's just the reality of the relentless nature of sports and, and the relentless nature of this league. Is it's an everyday thing, and and uh, I think you know the majority of our guys know that. We better come uh, ready to play our very best hockey tonight. I think playing your best hockey in this league gives you a chance to win. If you don't play at, at anywhere close to you know if you're not between 90 and 100 percent of, of your best, uh, you have you have almost no chance to win in this league. So we better be ready to work and compete. Some Somebody said to me the other day that, that watched the game, he, they said uh, it was evident that our guys' uh, commitment level to winning was excellent. And it better be that same way again. How does that show up? Shows up in the physical battles, shows up in the willingness to, to take a hit to make a play, it shows up in the, in the, the number of block shots and stuff like that. And uh, it better be the same thing here tonight.